coming up on today's show, Faraday Future loses two of its most important executives, including a co-founder who now says the company is effectively insolvent, Tesla finally makes its parts catalogue available for members of the public to view, and how you could own your very own miniature Starman Tesla, or read about the adventures of Starman in a comic. These stories and more coming next. Well, that's another month over and done with in the world of cleaner, greener vehicles. And now we're less than two months away from 2019 and all those new plug-in models we've been promised. But before we get excited about the future, let's look at the past with your weekly TEN roundup. Faraday Future co-founder Nick Sampson, whose previous employers have included Jaguar Land Rover, Lotus and Tesla, has called it a day at the Chinese-backed automaker. In a letter that was leaked to the press, Samson said the company was effectively insolvent and he couldn't continue at the company, knowing the impact its recent employee furloughing was having on their families and the community. Samson's resignation makes him the second of three co-founders to hand in the resignation notice and came the day after former EV1 chief engineer Peter Savagan, who was also senior VP of product and technology development at the company, walked out. It seems there's very little future left for Faraday Future. After years of resisting calls by owners and enthusiasts to make it easier for third parties to service and repair its cars, Tesla has finally published Model S, Model X and Model 3 vehicle parts catalogues online. Anyone can now browse the database and obtain part numbers for replacement parts. But while this is a fantastic win for right to repair enthusiasts, it's only a partial win. Not all of the parts will be readily available to DIY repairers, with some only available to order if you're an authorised repair centre. Back in June this year, Ford and Volkswagen announced that they would be working together in the future on commercial vehicle technology, pooling resources with a view to developing shared platforms. But now it appears that the two automakers might be going to do the same thing with EVs, with Ford's CFO Frank Witter calling a potential partnership on electric vehicles theoretically possible. Although Ford and Volkswagen have both promised us brand new plug-in vehicles in the near future, neither have really got much to show for it, so a partnership could certainly help make up for that relative lack of plug-in models so far. Tesla is promising we'll see a new update to its advanced autopilot system in around six weeks, adding a new, more advanced, smart summon feature that will make it possible for owners to literally summon their cars to meet them when they happen to be parked in a parking lot, and according to Elon Musk, drive it like a big remote-controlled car if the car is in sight. The next generation of Tesla's summon feature, due next year, will also be able to find parking spots and follow instructional signs like speed limits, Already, one Model X owner is using Summon to shuffle his car between parking spots from his office to avoid parking tickets. It's cute, but please don't do it on the public highway. Volvo and Baidu might seem like unlikely bedfellows, but the two companies have announced a big partnership this week that will see them work together to develop fully autonomous EVs. Volvo, of course, already has extensive experience in autonomous vehicle development. And while you might think of Baidu as a Chinese internet company, it too has been working on developing its own self-driving cars for some time. The end goal? Producing level 4 autonomous vehicles that can be used for car sharing and taxi services. Following an earlier recall this year for the Kia Niro Hybrid and Plug-in Hybrid models, Hyundai has announced a recall of the Ionic Hybrid and Plug-in Hybrid to fix the very same issue, drive system relays which could overheat and cause a fire. The Niro and Ionic share a common platform which explains why the two cars have the same recall problems. As with the previous recall, owners will be contacted by November 30th to arrange for an appropriate recall work to be carried out on their cars free of charge. Interestingly, the recall doesn't appear to affect the all-electric Ionic EV. It may have told US customers that they needed to order their cars by the middle of October to ensure delivery by the end of the year to take full advantage of the 7500 US dollar federal tax credit for EVs, but now Tesla has told those who want a Tesla Model 3 mid-range that if they order their car in the next few days, they should get it well before the end of this year. Deliveries of mid-range Model 3s are already in full swing, and it seems Tesla is prioritizing mid-range orders to ensure that it meets that deadline, under-promising and over-delivering when it comes to order lead times. 
following an earlier regulatory change that made it possible for companies to apply to test fully driverless cars on the road of California, Alphabet's autonomous car division, Waymo, has just become the first company to receive approval to test driverless cars on the roads of the Golden State. Leveraging its experiences in Arizona, where regulations are less stringent, Waymo says it will initially be testing its driverless cars in the southern San Francisco Bay Area, with remote operators supervising test cars and taking over control if required at all times via remote link. We really are living in the future, folks. The EPA and NHTSA's argument that man-made global warming is detrimental to human health, but is also unavoidable and so strict to fuel economy standards in the US are essentially pointless, is a nihilistic and fatalistic view that future generations will necessarily be subject to a climate in which human civilization, as it currently exists, is impossible. That's according to the state of California, which issued a 400-page repudiation last Friday of the current administration's plans to freeze fuel economy standards and revoke California's right to set its own stricter vehicle emission standards. California isn't going to give up on this one easily, and I suspect neither is the current administration. Prepare for a long fight. And now it's time for short shorts. We're starting with the news that another Tesla owner is suing the company after his car crashed into the back of a stalled vehicle on a freeway at 80 miles per hour. The man, a Floridian, claims that the car was in autopilot mode at the time. The lawsuit alleges that Tesla's sales policies have duped customers into believing autopilot is more advanced than it really is. In an official SEC filing made on Friday, Tesla has said it will produce a minimum of 3,000 Model 3 electric cars per week when its new Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai goes online next year. Currently, the ongoing US-China trade war is hitting Tesla pretty hard. Northern Irish bus company Wrights Group has just unveiled the world's first double-decker hydrogen fuel cell bus. It's got an operational range of 200 miles, 322 kilometers per fill, as well as have a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack. Following that little settlement with the SEC last month, Elon Musk has unnamed himself at Tesla, removing all titles describing his role at the company. In addition, he's just purchased an additional $10 million of shares on top of the $20 million that he'd committed to buying a few weeks back in order to help Tesla pay its portion of those SEC fines. In a way to offer additional perks to electric car drivers while simultaneously combating pollution, Austria has just enacted a new amendment to its speed limit regulations, giving EV owners permission to drive 30 kilometers an hour, nearly 20 miles per hour, faster on certain roads than the speed limit for ICE vehicles. SK Networks, working with Hyundai Motor in South Korea, has entered into a memorandum of understanding in which the two companies will work to expand EV charging stations in the country. Interestingly, they're going to convert some gas stations to electric charging station sites instead. Neat! Hyundai Kia has unveiled a new photovoltaic panel technology for car roofs, which they aim to roll out across their fleet in the future. The panels aren't powerful enough to provide full electric propulsion, but they will aid fuel economy for gas and hybrid models and eventually help charge EVs too. Electrify America has announced a new partnership with Envoy Technologies to bring on-demand electric car share services to Sacramento. Focused on lower income communities, the goal is to provide low cost, zero emission transport to areas historically unable to drive electric. Elon Musk sat down with Recode's Kara Swisher this week for the Recode Decode podcast, and during it, he discussed a lot of different things, including his fans on Twitter, dying on Mars, and the Tesla pickup that he says will look like it's out of Blade Runner. I'll link to the episode in the show notes below. As it prepares to roll out updates to its autopilot features, Tesla has increased the price of enhanced autopilot activation for customers who choose to activate it after their vehicle is delivered. Previously, it cost US$6,000 and now it's US$7,000 instead. NIO is busy expanding its electric vehicle sales in China as well as battery swap stations and this week we learned that it made a pretty big ballsy move by installing a battery swap station right next to a Tesla supercharger. It certainly grabbed people's attention. Tesla has confirmed it has received a subpoena from the SEC regarding Model 3 production estimates he made in 2017. This comes on the back of an alleged investigation by the FBI over whether Tesla misled information about Model 3 production around the same time. I assume the SEC's investigation is civil, while the FBI's one would be a criminal one. It's time for SEMA again, where we're all used to seeing gas-guzzling muscle cars tricked out with the latest in aftermarket tech. 
But this year, Chevrolet is showcasing a Chevy Bolt EV cargo van race support vehicle concept, as well as an all-electric tire shredding ECOPO Camaro. The latter has 600 kilowatts of power and boy does it look and sound good. And there are your short shorts. As usual, there will be more next week. With the new Formula E season underway, fans all over the world are eager to find out how they can watch the races live, with some TV stations and cable companies already securing exclusive deals with the FIA-approved race series. Now we've learned that YouTube has signed a deal with Formula E to livestream each and every race to British fans over YouTube. Sadly, it looks like other deals with other broadcasters means you won't be able to view the races on YouTube around the world, but here's hoping that will change at some point in the near future. Nearly half of the world's electric vehicles are found in just 25 cities, and 98% of the global electric vehicle markets are found in China, Europe, Japan, and the US. Now that's according to the International Council on Clean Transportation, which published its latest report into electric car adoption this week. Noting that the EV market is accelerating and that cities and countries with the highest adoption rates have the best incentives, the organization said a comprehensive policy package is necessary around the world to properly launch the EV market. That includes appropriate infrastructure, which it says only the 10 top electric car markets are currently anywhere near to solving with sufficient charging provision. For the rest of the world, well, it's a long, long way behind. BMW has announced a mid-double-digit million euro investment into revamping its Dingolfeng production facilities in Bavaria, Germany, so that it can expand electric vehicle battery and drivetrain production ahead of next year's production debut of the 2019 Mini E. Joking that the Mini E will have English apparel and a Bavarian heart, BMW will produce the Mini E itself at the same Oxford production facility as the rest of the Mini family, and should offer next-generation battery range while retaining the standard mini styling. And finally, remember Starman, the spacesuit wearing pilot of Elon Musk's personal Tesla Roadster that was sent into space by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as part of a payload test? Well, now Hot Wheels has chosen to immortalize Spaceman by producing its own limited edition Spaceman Tesla Roadster for you to buy, right in time for the holidays. At the same time, completely unrelated to Hot Wheels, there's a new comic launched this week called The Adventures of Starman. It turns out it's another goodbye for any would-be Tesla SpaceX fan with a nerdy heart. Fantastic. And on that note, it's sadly the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment and subscribe using the links below, hit the notification bell, and if you can, please consider supporting us through Patreon. We really couldn't make any of these shows without all of the fantastic support that we get from our Patreon patrons, and it's never too late to become one yourself. I will be back next week for another show, but because I'm out of town from Thursday onwards, I'll be recording this show super early. So you will have to forgive me if I miss any breaking stories that happen on Thursday or Friday next week. I'll cover them in the next episode. I've also got some great content lined up while I'm away, so I hope you'll all keep watching the channel. Before I go, I'd also like to remind those of you who are in the US to get out to your voting station or fill out your absentee ballot by Tuesday and make your mark in the election, if you can vote, that is. Honestly, I don't really mind who you vote for. I know who I'd vote for, but while voting is optional and you're perfectly at liberty to exercise your right not to vote, doing so means you're giving someone else permission to curtail other people's rights. Voting means, even if you don't like politics, you've had your say. Enough said. Okay, that really is it. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.